I'm here at Roy G. Guerrero Park in East Austin, Texas, um, foraging some early spring greens. And first thing I see is, you've probably heard of this, chickweed. It's this plant right here. The scientific name is Stellaria media. And if you'll come in close, I'll show you how to identify it. It has these little flowers that kind of dangle off like that there, and they have the opposite, they're simple leaves. They're nice and juicy. Never uses a green or a pot or a bun, any Western Indians, although it is an introduced species. Now, so you see these mats of it all right here. There's some more here. See when it's real little, it can look like that. And I'll show you some other ones here when it gets bigger. Just like that. And it can look a lot similar to uh, another really common herb around here, which is over here. This is called horse herb, Calyptocarpus vialis. And it's got a little different leaf shape there and doesn't have those dangly little flowers. Well, yeah, Stellaria media, chickweed. Uh, this is another good one to know. It's called Turk's Cap or Malva viscus arboreus. It's extremely common in the Austin area, often also used as an ornamental. And it's got, th these ones are pretty small. It can get you know, four or five feet tall and it has these nice red uh, hibiscus like flowers but they're great for greens when they're really s small and young and tender right here when they're they're bigger they can get kind of tough and chewy and at that point you want to cook them and I haven't found any reference of uh, American Indians using this exact species but everything in the mallow family the whole plant is edible and I've been eating this one forever and many foraging guides also talk about that ability of the foliage so I like to include this in a nice foraged salad just picking the choice young leaves don't have to worry too much about over harvesting because it is very common and it does really well this is another really good plant to know for greens. This is wood sorrel. Some people call it clover. It's really easily distinguishable by these heart-shaped leaves of three. And this one has like a nice tart, sour taste. And it was eaten by a whole lot of tribes around the US and in Texas. Many of their names, the Indian names for this plant translates basically to sour herb and that's because it has this nice sour tart taste really nice relish you can put it on top of other salad greens or put it with other food to cook to spice that's how the, the indians use it at least uh, i like to put it on other greens or just eat it kind of just by itself the kiowa would eat it to reduce thirst with their on a long walk this one is probably Oxalis dromondii or Oxalis delinei, slender yellow wood sorrel. They're really difficult to identify without their flowers. So I'm just going based upon the abundance here. So yeah, uh, Oxalis or wood sorrel, really good one to know. Very common, often in disturbed areas, it's like the side of the trail or something. This one's really easy to identify. All you have to do is touch it. Actually, this one does not that uncomfortable to touch. Okay, there we go. <laughs> this is a stinging nettle, uh, Urtica chemidrioides is the species, the heart leaf nettle. And it has these little stinging hairs all over the stems and leaves. And they actually inject formic acid into you, which is uh, exactly what ants envenomate you with. So it feels like a little ant sting around you, your body. But this plant is actually edible. Uh, it was eaten by 
a lot of different Indian tribes. Not this species specifically, but a congener, a Urtica dioica. And I read that the Cahuila ate it raw. I don't know about that, but I've noticed when you dry it, that gets rid of the stinging nature, except on the sort of heavier stems, they take a while to dry out. They can still sting you after a day or two of drying. But another way to eat it is just boil it. It's a water really quick. So if you want it for some salad greens, you just gotta dip it in some boiled water and that'll denature the formic acid and deactivate it. So I like to gather it with leather gloves. This species is pretty common around Austin. Uh, another uh, really popular use is for cordage. The stems actually have uh, some nice fibers which can be and sort of extract it. And it can be cooked and prepared just like spinach. In fact, they're more nutritious than spinach. So, I don't eat too many salad, but it's a nice bunch. I'm trying not to stick with this. This is a really cool one. And this is the perfect time of year, kind of the only time you can get it, uh, is red bud. And what's neat about it is it flowers before it leaves out. This one's kind of being a rebel, but uh, this one in the background you can see is fully flowered out and a few little leaves on there. And red bud's cool because you can eat the flowers. They got a nice sweet taste. They were eaten by a Cherokee, especially their children. It's a nice little sweet treat. Some of them, I assume before they pollinated, got a nice little burst of sweetness. Other than that, there's a very slight sort of astringent taste, but they go great as a garnish for salad or all sorts of things. Just made some sun tea of it this morning. These are some young Mustang grape leaves and buds there. You can see they almost look like a tiny little bunch of grapes. They're kind of fuzzy, and they, they can be a little tough, but when they're really young, they make a nice little addition to your salad. They got kind of a, a bit of tart taste. And you can eat these nice buds as well. Yeah. Lepidus mustangensis, mustang grape. Extremely common. And this one is burr clover, or medicago polymorpha. It's closely related to the other clovers, which are in the genus Trifolium, as you can see the three leaves there. And this is that really annoying plant, probably in your yard, uh, that has these little burrs that stick onto everything. And those burrs actually were collected by the capuila and parched and ground and roasted into a sort of meal. But the foliage of this is edible and of uh, other species in the Medicaid genus were going to be eaten by the American Indians. And things in this family, the pea family, are really nutritious because they're nitrogen fixers and they're really high in protein. When clovers came into season in California, the Indians would all celebrate in the Northern California, San Francisco Bay Area. And don't eat so much, they get bloated and have someone tread on their stomach or eat some medicine to deal with it. But it makes a nice green to add to your salads. And I like it with it anyway. There's some introduced species. Not a lot of it here. But while we're down here, we also have some henbit. This is Lamium amplexicola. And this is in the mint family. Everything in the mint family has these square stems. They're square in cross section. I don't know if you can see it there, but sometimes I can't even see it, but you can feel it. And a lot of things in the mint family were eaten by the American Indians. I haven't found a source saying this one in particular was eaten, but I have found many foraging guides and other sources that 
say this is good to eat. And I've eaten it plenty of times and it's got a nice taste. It's got a little slight minty taste to it. You know, adds a little bit of extra flavor to a salad and obviously some nice color. This is Rumex Christus, or curled dock, curly dock. It's called that because it has these sort of twisted and curled leaves. The Ojibwe name for it actually means yeah, transit twisted leaf basically. So this was eaten by many different uh, American Indian tribes. And they would eat it fresh, but only when it was young, either the young leaves or when the plant itself was young. For example, the Iroquois would eat it before the stem even appears, and it's just sort of a rosette on the ground. But when it's older, more mature leaves, uh, they're better to be cooked or mixed with the trees or something like that. If you want to add a beautiful garnish to your salads, you can always throw on some Dewberry flower. I have much of a taste, but uh, very edible and beautiful. This is Shepherd's Purse or Capsella bursa pastoris, which also means Shepherd's Purse. It's named so because of these little seed capsules, which look just like a shepherd's purse. This one was eaten by the Kahula and Cherokee as greens. Some other Indians use it as they would take the seeds and parch and grind them and make like a meal. Mm. Oh my god, it's delicious. This one's really common, introduced. Find it in disturbed areas. This one's kind of hard to distinguish just from any old grass, but it was actually Tenantia anomala or false day flower and uh, it's got a little bit wider base there where it uh, envelops the stem and when it has flowers they're these nice bluish flowers that you know, kind of look like a pea or they have two petals but this is one's really delicious huh? well maybe not delicious but very tasteless kind of and, uh, it's a nice crisp addition to salads. Very common in Boston. Let's grab a few of those.